Welcome to the Educational Triage Podcast, people. This week, we are talking about being a phoenix in education. So what does that mean? If you think about it, we go into the first part of the year, young, bright, and fresh, feeling really, really, really positive and generous about the year. And by this time, we drag our decrepit corpses through the door and try to make good for the last few days of school. So how do we make this a much easier plan when we come back in the fall so that we can be better prepared and armed and have fewer worries over the summer? So what say you, Philip? I say aloha. It's good to be here and talk about that <laughs> stuff because I've been running into that. It's like, yeah, uh, the end of the year is hard to deal with. It's sort of, it, depending on your stage of life, it's especially hard for the seniors because they just want to get gone in high school. Right. Juniors are like, they want to get gone too, but realize that they have a whole nother year. But it's really a drag on, on everybody coming at the end of the year. And then you go into the summertime. Um, and I always sort of found that I could rejuvenate kind of quick. And then, yeah, once I had my back toward the school year. And then, um, yeah, to start to kind of rebuild my learning desire. <laughs> <laughs> and then that well, starts and I start gathering more info. And I, I, I purposely forget about school for like, month it's like yeah yeah well it's it it's healthy to be able to forget about it but in the meantime while we're cleaning everything up for the year because many of us have to change classrooms many of us have to do you know end of the year tasks so what is it that we can do and so that's what today is about it's a proactive Mm -hmm. kind of thing that we can do to start off thinking more positively about next year and being able to let things go during the summer, knowing that we can take care of what we need to take care of. This is also good for your mental health and basically allows you to just go completely limp at the end of the year until you do reach full pumpacity. Is that a word? Pumpacity? Pumpacity? Where you get pumped up with life. Oh, pumpy P-U-M-P, <laughs> pumpacity, yeah. Pumpiosity. <laughs> What's pumpiosity? That's the correct way to make pump. No. <laughs> <laughs> the state of mind. <laughs> You're right, though. I hadn't thought about some people have to move rooms. Yeah. That's just a drag, which really helps uh, if you're organized to, you know, when that move comes, it's really handy if your file cabinet is piled up because <laughs> that's happening. Seriously. Yeah. The rest of stuff so, is what, tough, you know? so one thing, the first, the first element that I think that we need to take a look at, and this is something that will actually help bring some people back and do a little bit of reviving for them. And maybe take some of that exhaustion off of their teacup. And that would be thinking about what actually worked this year. What are some of the what are some of the strategies? What are some of the lessons? What are some of the projects? Whatever. What actually worked this year? So if you think about what plans you have, and if you make out lists, sometimes some people like to do like a mind map. Some of you might want to write it down. However, whatever works, what actually worked this year? So if you start from the beginning of the year and make your way through and think about what actually did work and why did it work? What are some things that made that work? And so it takes you out of the present and puts you into this other realm. So you're not focused on all the ishy wit whatnots that you have to deal with right now. Ishy whatnots. Yeah. 
And then what tweaks do you have? What tweaks did you use? What tweaks do you think that you should have had? And maybe put those into a little pile somewhere. We're talking about curriculum, classroom procedure, yeah. and or both? I'm ta- everything. Everything. Um, classroom procedure, curriculum, lesson plans. Oh, yeah. You know, I was, I was, <laughs> I, I've been talking to some of my former t- students, yeah. you know, because they, they do call me. They do come by and or text me and they have they I said, what went right when I was teaching you? And they said, well, we had a huge classroom. And I said, yeah, there were 38, 42 kids. And they yeah. said and I said, what worked for you as students? And they said, well, we we ran to your class because even though we told you how much we hated you. It was like the best class. And I thought, well, well, what made it that? And they said, because you talked to us and you were real. And (laughs) they said, you know, you made sure that we all understood what was going on. And you did offer us a lot of homework and you worked with us. And I said, okay, but what worked for you? Because I, I really worked you hard. And they said, yeah, we hated you. But the next year, life was so much simpler. And I thought, okay, fine. So it was just, you know, talking to the kids and just working with them and just Mm -hmm. building that community. It's all about the relationship, right? Yeah, it seems to be. And when we talked to Tara... Garcia Matthewson from Heckinger Report. When we talked to Joe McQueen, it's all about relationships. Everybody we talk to, it's all about building those relationships. And it's got to be a real relationship. It cannot be, it cannot be full of artifice. It's it's really, a, for some reason, I'm kind of blessed with the authenticity. <laughs> I guess I, I'm authentically listening to the student and it shows because I, you're saying, you know, uh, people, Tara from Hedinger and Joe McQueen and all, they say the same thing. And it's like, I was in a classroom today and I got tagged for being the best sub. And so I said, hey, okay, that's really cool. I started talking. I go, so what What makes me the best sub out of curiosity? And it's because you treat us like people and you listen to what we have to say. And I just, yeah. dang. Dude, God, citation, page one, book one, line one. That's the essence of mm-hmm. it all. It's just because you treat us like people and you listen to what we say. And I'm just. And you don't leave people in the dust. No, I don't. It's like, it, it, I, yeah, he says you're real. If they're, oh, thank you. Yeah. Right. Because if they're not getting it, they're not getting it. And that's on you. Yeah. Basically, I feel that way. And so I'm, if I'm struggling, I'll let them know I'm struggling to get this to you. So help help me come back at it. And they like that. It, it's hard, though. Yeah. It's really hard. It can be. Yeah, it can so, be. So much energy, you know. And yeah, it's just, but I really love it. Especially if you, you know, can't really quite get in there. And it's like, oh, how do I get another approach on this? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because you get a lot more from that relationship than you do when you're foisting something really heavy duty on the yeah. students, right? Yeah, I mean the content is always secondary as far as I'm concerned. Well, the can't... content's important, but in the first, yeah. But if you don't make the connection I with the re- student, then you can't really get to the depth of the content, and so you have to establish that right away. I mean, it only takes maybe a few right. minutes, but. Yeah, you may not even talk about the content. You go now. We got to do the work thing. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. We got it. That's why we're here. Yeah. And then they, okay. So yeah, I like to do that. That's why we're here. If we don't do that, then what else are we doing here? <laughs> well, you establish a relationship and a rapport with the students within the first five twenty minutes, five yeah. ten minutes. Yeah, and then after that, if you've done it right, they'll follow you into all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know that they they even text you about that. I hated you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then they thanked me because the next year everything was so much easier. And then when they went to college, 
They said, do you realize that I still, this is them speaking. Do you realize we still use the same things that you taught us in sophomore English? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, writing papers is so easy now. Thank you. Nice. So that's a compliment times 10 because for the thank you, but yeah. Wow. Giving them something like that and having them. Know yeah. That, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, I think that if we can instill confidence in students and let them know that they are capable of doing these things, and sometimes you just have to drop kick them into there, not literally, but <laughs> here's what happened. I told the students, I said, okay, according to the curriculum dictates, I need to teach you grammar. Oh, no, no, no. And I said, can everybody tell me what a noun is? And they all just kind of looked at me and I said, anything with a name, anything that has to be named, like wind, counter, anything like that. Bob. No. <laughs> He's right. a proper noun. Depending on the so, body. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they just, they fought me on it. And I said, okay, so we won't do grammar. Because obviously, you already know the grammar. And they said, yeah, we do. And I said, well, good, because you've been taught it since first grade. So here you are, 10th grade. That's nine years you've had grammar. So now you're going to put that into practice. And all of a sudden, they went white. And I said, why do you look so scared? And I said, you said that you know this stuff. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to start writing papers. And what's going to happen is... I'm going to assign you a paper a week. We're still going to do our other things, but you know, I don't assign much homework, but you will be given a, a paper a week. We'll go through the same processes that we do. But when I receive your paper, I will go. And when I hit the fifth mistake, I will draw a line across the page and I will stop reading and I will hand it back to you. And they said, are you going to mark down where our mistakes are? And I said, why would I do that? You already know them. You already know your grammar. You already know how to write. You right. told me that you that that would be pointless. So I'm not going to do that. So maybe you want to get together with some other people just to make sure. And so they were furious. Some of them had like seven or eight rewrites that they had to do. So they were cycling all these papers constantly. <laughs> they hate that. And they said it was the worst thing that they had to do. But it made them more conscientious about what it was that they were writing, made them more aware. They worked with each other. It really, it got them going. And then there were some that just had such a hard time, and I gave them an incomplete. It did and I something. said, get me those I wanna, papers. I want to back you up a little bit here. It okay. did something for them that is a huge gift. It broke up the, I'm going to check the box and move on mentality. It was that, what? I have to do this again? Yes. Again? Yes. And uh -huh. again? Until it's right? Yes. And that's the way the world kind of works. But they've learned to check boxes. And, okay, part two. Okay, now part three, go. You know, it's like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. The skill is what we're after here. And it really, because college is like that. And they don't get a lot of that till they get to college. That right. progress and that outcome-based thing, yeah. So you and gave so, them a huge outlet or a huge tool to use in college. Yeah. Well, somebody, one of them looked at me and said, why are you doing this to us? And I said, <laughs> because you can. Yep. Somebody has to, as will be me. 